and that I am your enemy a friend. An ally. You want the truth, Agent. The real Night not light. Come find me. Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today, Danger is Upon Us in The Division 2. The finale for Year 6 Season 1 of the game, First Rogue, drops tomorrow, Tuesday, September 3rd. And as I typically like to do prior to each season's conclusion, in this video I want to recap what has gone down so far this season, what we're anticipating heading into the finale, and what some of my predictions are. And this time around is a bit unique, because there are a lot of unknowns heading into this final mission. Aside from the overall intention of finally confronting Aaron Keener and potentially forging an alliance, against the Black Tusk, Hunters, and more. We don't know what his objective in DC is, what he's been doing since his arrival. We don't know where we're headed or what awaits us. And if that all wasn't bad enough, this is Aaron Keener we're talking about. Even if the outcome of this is his partnership, this is by far the most dangerous individual and nemesis we faced in the Division universe. And we're assumedly about to be face to face with him. So there's a lot to go over here. As we dive in, I'll shout out that if you want to catch my live playthrough and reaction to the finale tomorrow, I will be going live right here on YouTube at 8.30 a.m. Pacific, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. And if you want to be sure to not miss it, then definitely subscribe if you haven't already and have those notifications on. Without further ado, let's get into all of this. Okay, so the first Rogue finale. I'm honestly quite excited for it. And one of the main reasons for that is what I just touched on in the intro, just the sheer amount of unknowns heading into this, right? Think back to the past couple of seasons. When Mari was captured, we knew her rescue op was the finale. When it was time to fight the recruiter, we knew that there was a big final battle coming. When Kelso had gone missing, we knew that we were following her trail, but also we were getting big real-time revelations throughout the hunt, like seeing the echo between Keener and Faye. This season had a bit of a different track. We know the setup. Keener, Theo, and Kelso drove all the way from Manhattan to DC for reasons. We don't really know why. Of course, it's assumed that at least a partial reason is because we're here and clearly Keener wants to parlay with us. That's why we've set out to complete these various trials. But I do not believe that that is the sole cause. However, it's hard to fully determine because ever since the start of the season, we've gotten no real-time updates on what Keener and co are up to. The trials have delivered us some amazing lore that I've already covered in the past couple of videos, but it's all further illuminating past events. You know, we haven't gotten, like, a conversation between Theo and Kelso with her talking about what it feels like to return home now being a rogue. We didn't get any sort of Keener quips about him rolling into town. We simply don't know what they've been up to. Now, we did get one clue, finally, at the tail end of the most recent lead trial, and I did mention this in the video I did on that whole thing. Once completed, Kina remarks about how it's almost time for us to meet him so that he can finally tell us about Diamond. Quick refresher for any who don't know, Diamond, from what we know, is the AI system that the Black Tusk use. It's essentially an equivalent of Isaac and Anna, although notably without an AI voice, rather it just feeds the user a raw data stream for them to process. And it's built on the same infrastructure as the other two AIs, making it equally susceptible to tampering through the other systems, as has been delved into in some of the Descent Comps and the Crossroads novels. Now this came a bit out of left field, as we previously didn't have many indications that Keener was focusing on diamond that he had some kind of valuable intel to share on it whatever but i do expect that to be a big thread of this final mission and one thing i can point to that backs that up is from this season's trailer i know i've mentioned this a few times already in some past videos but i think it cannot be understated how important a detail it is where we see keener's watch flip from rogue back to shd i mean he is the rogue the season is titled after him he's the first rogue and yet we see him seemingly at will flip back to the golden orange glow my guess on that and how this all ties in into the diamond thread is that Keener and Theo have unlocked or discovered some sort of ability to tap into multiple of these three systems at once, and that somehow they intend to utilize that trick to attack or cripple the networks at large, specifically targeting the Black Tusk and whatever network the Hunters may use, if any. We'll see how close that ends up being, but those are my thoughts in general. As for the mission itself, we have no indication as to where it might take place, which personally I prefer. I like the surprise. You know, a few seasons back, they used to basically spoil the mission location in the trailer. You saw the power plant in season 10's trailer, Coney Island in season 11's, the zoo in year 5 season 1's, and maybe there's something to be gained by hyper-analyzing first Rogue's trailer, but more broadly it doesn't seem to immediately give away any specifics, which again just feeds into the unknown of all of this. We also don't really know how this mission is going to play out. Surely it's not just we walk into a room and chat with Keener. I assume maybe the Black Tusk or some other faction is impeding on his and Theo's work and so we have to clear them out while we make our way to him. But then the outcome of this all is really the big underlying question mark. I mean, 
what happens after this? Do we join Keener? If so, what does that mean in terms of gameplay? Are we flagged rogue? Do we still get to access the base of ops and the castle? Assumedly, the answer to all of that is yes, minus the rogue part. We'll see. Uh, but it's just going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Or maybe this is all another dead end, one of his schemes. We just don't know. And personally, that makes me all the more pumped to get in there and see how things play out. I do want to leave you all with one final notion and thought that I have, and that's that, even if the outcome of this season is that we're now in an alliance with Keener, I do not believe whatsoever that he is to be trusted. Now, I do believe that we share a common enemy. It's clear that his views do not align with that of Natalia and Cal, and he wants to see them taken down for the betterment of the country and the world. However, that's where it ends. Even though people are having fun saying that the Keener is right line paid off after all these years, being right about a couple of things does not mean you're a saint. And I wholeheartedly believe that at the end of the day, while Keener needs us and we need him to adequately enter into this conflict, that does not mean that our views or values align. It's very similar to the argument I made recently about how just because you're rogue, that doesn't automatically mean you're a villain or that you're trying to sabotage the institution, whatever. Just because Keener wants to take down some bad people, that doesn't mean that he hasn't done bad things himself. My favorite case of this is how we learned last season about how the Eclipse virus attack on City Hall in Manhattan, that happened after Keener and Faye teamed up. However, we hear that Faye did not sign up for that specific action. Keener did not consult nor warn her about it. Instead, he did what Keener does best, and that's do whatever is in his best interests. So, my point, even if by the end of tomorrow we're Team Keener, I don't believe that that means that he wouldn't or won't cut us loose the moment he decides we're no longer vital to his cause. Now, of course, this isn't an open-ended choice-based RPG. There's nothing you can do about whether or not Keener might betray us down the line. I just think it's something interesting to watch out for. He can be a powerful ally, one that we need pretty sorely right now, but that doesn't make him any less him. And as Manny said during the Leto trial, Aaron Keener remains one of the most dangerous individuals on the planet. Alright my friends, well that is going to do it for your recap and preparations for what to expect in tomorrow's latest Division 2 season finale. As stated, I'm quite excited by the lack of info that we have going into this. We've got a few tidbits and clues to lean on, but mostly we're headed into the unknown, and if Aaron Keener is involved, it's bound to be good. I would absolutely love to get all of your guys' thoughts and predictions on this down in the comments below. What do you think awaits us in this finale mission? What sort of hijinks do you think Keener and co have been up to in DC? And what are just your general predictions on where things will be left off. Will an alliance form? Does that change anything gameplay wise? As always, we'd love to read through any and everything you've got below. That's going to do it for me today though, everybody. Once again, I will be live tomorrow morning right here on the channel at 8.30 a.m. Pacific, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Hope to see you there. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Until then, folks, Rogue Gold, out.